वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ रन योगी डायरीज दिस इज योर होस्ट संतोष शिवा इफ यू न्यू टू द चैनल प्लीज टू रिमेंबर टू सब्सक्राइब इफ यू लाइक दिस कॉन्वर्जेशन हिट लाइक एंड लीव योर कॉमेंट्स बिलो एंड लेट इस नो वॉट यू थिंक एक्साइटेड टू हैव टूडे इन द हाउस ए डियर फ्रेंड श्रीनाथ नगरूर हु हैज बीन ऑन दिस फैसिनेटिंग जर्नी ऑफ सेल्फ डिस्कवरी इन द एरिया ऑफ फिटनेस वेट लॉस एंड हेल्थ after struggling for many years with fluctuating weight and uh, fat gain he has seems to have landed on something that's working consistently for him and over the last year or so has lost significant weight uh, close to 50 pounds i believe we get behind the scenes i love this conversation took a lot away i'm sure you will let's dig in also as a form of disclaimer all information shared in this podcast is or uh, from personal experience and does not construe medical advice so if you are dealing with medical conditions you should talk to your physician hey srinath welcome to run yogi diaries hey santosh thanks for having me here i'm finally worthy enough uh, to join this chat you are always worthy enough so um, no thanks thanks for uh, taking the time and uh, joining us in this conversation um, you know you've been going through a, a fascinating journey of um, health fitness and weight loss uh, which is of interest to everyone today right uh, and um, so i thought it'd be great conversation you you obviously um, are a busy uh, professional and uh, uh, but you managed to find something that's working so we'll dig into all of that but before that let me take a dig a, i mean take a stab at uh, introducing you and then we'll go from there sure sure thanks antosh all right so is that is that you're going to do that or am i going to do that i'll 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 introduce you and then you can add anything that i've missed okay perfect thank you okay so you know uh, shrinath and i go a long way we are uh, friends for um, decades and um, so i know a few things about him which i'm not going to reveal all of it but i'll do a, a bit of an introduction here so shrinath nagroor uh, you live in chicago um, work in the tech industry as an executive in the business side of things and married kids um and you've been uh, someone who's pursuing been for pursuing fitness for a long time um and uh, but then you've you seem to have landed on something that's working uh, well for you um what else uh, originally from bangalore uh, been in the us for like uh, you know a couple of decades as well uh what else did i miss anything No, I don't think so. I think uh, I think you got it right. Okay. Good. So, so you know what we'll do is maybe uh start with uh some flashback, right? And mm-hmm. um I I've known you for so many so many years and uh you're a you're a big made guy. You're 6 foot 6 foot 3, uh almost like a basketball player and uh, so you're a big made guy and right and and um, a lot of us who are big made big made guys uh, although i'm not as big made as you are but i i do tend to also uh, fall in that uh, spectrum uh we struggle with what's the right uh, body uh, you know size or body structure for ourselves and um, so i think this conversation might throw some light around weight fitness and all of that good stuff that you've been pursuing so let me maybe uh, Uh, have you take us back into a bit of a flashback about your own you know search and struggles in the space and how you landed today so shall we do that no absolutely <laughs> uh uh thanks for kindling some 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 memories there um so so uh, you know i think i think uh, i'm i'm going to be getting to my milestone year this year uh, my 50th year so So while I was growing up uh, you know my my environment had always told me uh, that we are coming from a family that has fat genes um mm-hmm. so so my mom's side especially um, you know repeatedly said hey we have a tendency to put on weight we have a tendency to put on weight so 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 somewhere i think there was a normalization that had happened you know with regards to our ability to you know put on weight right so mm-hmm. um i think i think uh, that's that's how i grew up you know and i'm talking about when i when i came 
to understand uh, my senses and and everything else and uh, uh, interestingly enough my dad is only 58 and my mom is only 51 uh, so in some way and fashion i just ended up growing to become 6263 uh, you know in height um, so all through the growing years i've always been considered to be a big guy uh, you know those were the days when we did not know the concept of bullying but i was bullied quite a bit uh, my nicknames mm. were good enough uh, in that respect and um, you know i was was a big at every stage of my life i was always the biggest kid in the class not only tall but also in terms of um, you know the weight and other things because of that, uh, the sports that I picked as well uh, was also aligned with my size because I was conditioned, you know, to do things in a certain manner. So uh, I used to love to play cricket. So even when I used to play cricket, I used to have trouble running between the wickets. So I always used to have runner. So it used to become a default because I wasn't running fast enough. Uh, those days, uh, there was no concept of basketball and others. So we used to play kabaddi and coco in school mm -hmm. and i always used to choose kabaddi because you know i was the big guy in the team trying to hold everything together and stuff like that so so i think it was it was something that i had accepted uh, you know as as uh, as a norm uh, but i then picked up shuttle in the later part of my uh, school years and i did very well with shuttle but i think my uh, my weight my size was always a impediment for for me to do that right um, mm -hmm. I came to college, uh, you know, I suddenly realized, uh, you know, that my eating habits and, you know, my, my living habits completely transformed. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happens in college and, uh, you know, completely went out of control. And I think in the third year of engineering, I um, was uh, possibly at my highest weight uh, ever, right? Um, Again, I was a big guy, uh, so highest weight ever, you know, felt sick. I never could get trousers ready-made. I could not get shoes. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a very hard, I mean, people who are dealing with weight and, mm -hmm. you know, those challenges, um, it, it is a very real problem. You know, they do not express. I mean, I, I never expressed, but I always used to feel very uh, embarrassed about it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but also I had finished three years in engineering. I was very shy. I never used to hang out. I mean, I used to hang out with my friends and all that stuff, but never about girls and, and so on and so forth. And, uh, I was frustrated. I wanted to change. And then my first moment happened when I was in the library. I, I still remember, uh, March 18th of 1994. I'm good with date. So, uh, March 18th, 1994, I happened to be in my college library and I was, you know, browsing some, some magazines and suddenly I found this guy, uh, Amjad Khan's son, uh, who went mm. through a transformation. Okay. And this is mm. the time of the magazines, right? No computers, nothing. Mm -hmm. So I just read that article and something switched in my head and I came out and I said, okay, today is a day for the next six months. I'm going to just eat set food, right? And uh, for the next six months, I'm going to do nothing other than eat set food. And it was one of the fantastic journeys in my life because I started running in the morning, something that I hated, and I started eating fixed food. Um, and and uh, the next six months, I lost every bit of the weight that I was carrying for several years. Mm -hmm. um, so fantastic feeling. Number 18th, I broke my fast. I was at my lowest weight ever since I had become a full-grown adult. And... Uh, and uh, you know, I thought I've arrived and and then I started living life again. So things went on and uh, then I put on all the weight in the next uh, possibly about close to about three, three and a half years. I didn't get to my full blown weight ever again until about a year ago, uh, but it started adding up. You know, it started adding up um, again you know, bad habits and, you know, a lot of, lot of things happening, you know, when you're getting out of college and so on and so forth. And then of course, you know, after I lost my weight, I met my wife. I mean, suddenly she discovered somebody new and, you know, I said, okay. And we got married a little early and then we moved in. And, and then after that weight has been a fluctuating exercise, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes I feel, okay, I've gone beyond a certain point. Then I go into of a diet that is fad. Uh, so I have, you know, friends recommending GM diet, you know, where you do a seven day fast, uh, a keto diet, South beach diet. 
and uh, you know and and all these different things have happened mm-hmm. over the last uh, 20 years 20 mm-hmm. years and i've gone through several you know um ups and downs in the process yeah yeah and th- th- that's that's fascinating so um it <coughs> seems like you 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 been on this uh, cyclical exploratory journey right and now in, you did talk about the emotional impact and i think anyone uh, you know dealing with uh, and and it's again like subjective right in the sense that it is it's true for you it's real for you and you know you might have people come and say oh why are you uh, fussing over it you seem fine you know the, but at the same time at a personal level uh, you're kind of still dealing with you know there's something missing for me and then you know i i want to uh, there's something about the weight i'm carrying or whatever right and there's this whole subculture of political rightness today in the world about fat shaming and you know that's another part right and so you're kind of walking that fine line in terms of what's right for you versus um am i judging somebody for being a certain weight or a certain look right so i'm sure we'll we'll double click on some of that aspect as well but um let's fast forward right and you seem to i've seen you um significantly lose weight i mean i told you i couldn't recognize you when i saw you on the camera today and since the last time i met you uh uh you've lost more weight and um you you look very different right from from uh before and it's been consistent i think for the last uh, two years you've been on this and it's been very consistent so that's the thing that fascinated me because like you said there are fads and people lose weight and then again after a few months it's it's again back so let's let's get to that in terms of what how did you <coughs> land here <coughs> and what's working for you and um, so let's get there so i want to i want to just respond to one point that you made about the emotional impact of carrying a lot of weight that emotional impact of carrying a lot of weight is going to be there for life for people right uh it is uh it is very difficult to get off that feeling okay uh because you don't know what is enough because you are mm. you know all the way out to perfect yourself and so on and so forth so it's a very psychologically impacting uh mm. thing right so even people right. who have gone through transformations uh who are very proud of what they have done are still dealing with that level of insecurity in their minds mm. i can mm. i can tell you with personal experience and it will be there uh it will be there right. because it is it has hit you know your nerve somewhere very deep inside and uh, it takes a lot of effort um, you know to get out of it so so i mean again there's a message if you are psychologically impacted uh, there are many of them out there uh, that are dealing with similar uh, exercise that is number one number two i keep hearing you making reference to weight loss um, again it is not weight loss it is fat loss and this is a learning that i have gone through after close to 30 years uh mm. you know if i if i have to uh it's it's actually very interesting it just occurred to me the first time i started this was on march 18 1994 which is exactly mm. 30 years as of tomorrow right uh, it just came to me so anyways so so that is that is number one uh the second um, you know point that i also wanted to i also wanted to talk about was uh um <clears throat> with regards to the timeline mm. uh so my journey uh you know where i think you have had this conversation uh, you and i have had this conversation before and i said santosh i want to i want to wait for us to have this conversation because i need to really understand you know the the depth of what i'm trying to do and mm. um, um you know so it is important that i come into this conversation only when i have come to realize that i understand now what is being done and what needs to be done and so on and so forth so i think i just wanted to kind of connect um those two points yeah uh, makes sense no no well. that that's a that's a great point i think uh, thanks for that clarification i agree i think it's fat loss uh, and weight loss uh, not weight loss uh, that's that's a that's a perfect reframing because that answers a lot of questions and it sets the right context right because fat loss is a health conversation it's not a 
uh, about looks and it's not about uh, judging how you look and it's more of health right uh, because having a lot of fat in your body has <coughs> health impact so thanks that that that's that makes perfect sense so so let's kind of dig in and uh, you know fast forward uh, let's get to uh, what happened 2 years ago when you bumped into this new uh, and how, how did it happen first of all let's let's get there see i think i think like with everyone else um i think lockdown uh, you know obviously was a transformative period uh and uh and this one i have to credit my wife uh she hit the concept of quantified nutrition mm. uh in 2020 all right and uh, uh this was around the same time that uh, there was a company called squats uh mm-hmm. which is now reframed itself as fitta uh mm-hmm. which came into existence and it became very very prevalent in the market right about uh, providing and by the way they're not product. sponsoring the show yeah they are not sponsoring the show but uh you know there are there are three pieces of inspiration for me and uh you know since we were talking about the starting point uh i just wanted to give you the genesis of it because again uh you know if i if i Uh, you know maybe i can i can share my weight journey graphs over the mm-hmm. last 20 years and you'll actually see uh my weight fluctuations over the years and i can say okay this was a time when i dropped this many pounds because of no carb mm-hmm. diet this was a time i dropped this much weight because of keto diet or south beach diet uh or i was running the marathon or you know something like that right so every time there used to be that dip okay and in 2020 this was again a new phenomena that came to my came to my uh, attention and that was uh, quantified nutrition mm-hmm. and uh, you know the whole thing started with you know putting up a diet plan and you know eating something here and there and so on and so forth so i started quantified nutrition in 2020 just right after the lockdown and uh, expectedly i i did lose you know a lot of lot of weight slash fat uh not to the extent that i have experienced this time but uh, it did happen and uh, somewhere through the process there were things that were happening at work and you know in life uh, stress and you know a lot of commotion mm-hmm. so you suddenly said hey i have other shit to deal with sorry for the language but i have other stuff to deal with uh so let me let me figure this out later Mm-hmm. but while i was going through this journey i also did a lot of research on nutrition and you know things like that so i did understand the fundamentals of why quantified nutrition and so on and so forth and uh, but it was a classic case where i knew what to do but i never had the 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 urge or the motivation uh, to do it right so 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 2020 2021 and 2022 and you're talking about two years to be very honest i mean this journey of mine started exactly a year ago and uh, you know the the whole journey of uh, this whole transformation uh and and i'm just coming to a year in the next week um so i think in 2022 i hit the peak of my mm-hmm. weight okay again this was the second time in my life and uh and it was one of those situations where you knew what to do you knew what's going to make a difference to you but you're not able to do it and a lot of us go through that we know the theory very well we know we should not be doing xyz in a day we know we should not be um uh, uh you know drinking excessively we should not be uh you know eating oily food and we should not be eating excessive food and stuff like that but we don't do it we are not able to do it and that was a struggle that i was going through at that point mm. in time and i said this has to change so i went back to the basics and i said i understand the technology i understand the science and i know what needs to be done and i said okay how do i get it done now now it's the question okay. of execution right mm. so so on march 27th good with dates 2022 you you are the my, rare, rare guys who remembers dates you know 
I'm, I, I sound like that guy in Dil Chata Hai, right? I mean, that other boyfriend, right? I mean, it's like, so, so it's actually a very nerdy character, uh, knowing dates. But, but I, I remember dates for whatever reason. Mm. Um, mm. March uh, 27th last year. Uh, so th- there were there were multiple things that were coming together, right, for me. So one, um, you know, I had, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big, uh, big fan of uh, the book, The Power of Habit. Okay, uh, if you guys have read it, uh, great. If you've not, uh, definitely pick it up. Similar book is Atomic Habits. Yeah. Um, so I was also going through some internal coaching at work and and so on and so mm-hmm. forth. So I kind of I kind of came to realize that if changes have to be made, uh, habits have to be changed, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was the first thing that you know I in my head I was thinking there was no I mean there's no master plan to this, right? I mean this is all working mm-hmm. on your subconscious yeah, for a yeah. while. Uh, so so a habit had to be changed. That is number mm-hmm. one. The second thing, you know, maybe it's the age, maybe whatever it is, right? I I started believing in simplifying life, hmm. uh, right? Uh, I wanted to simplify everything that I do, uh, hmm. you know, how I live and what I do and stuff like that. No extravagance. So, uh, so no this has got money. nothing to do with the weight part as such. It's just a this general... has nothing to do yeah. with weight, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, so this is about just simplifying life and mm-hmm. habit creation and so on and so forth. And I said, with zero expectations about what is going to happen, I'm going to make a lifestyle change with mm. the knowledge I have about the science of nutrition. Mm. Okay. By the time, by the way, I had, had gotten my certification and all that stuff done. So I understood, mm. you know, the, the various things that are happening and so, so on and so forth. So at that point in time, a very interesting topic hit my, you know, uh, Insta Reels and I did a little bit more of research. And this is the concept of genetics. Okay. Okay. So it took me back to the point that I made when I was growing up, mm-hmm. which my mom kept saying, saying, "Hey, it is genetics. We are. It's all in the genes. We are supposed to be big. We are supposed to be mm-hmm. carrying a lot of weight. We can't do anything about it. You know. And uh, we've had these conversations many times about destiny and uh, right. ownership. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, yeah. I'm not a big believer in destiny. I'm a big believer in action and acceptance." Uh, so I said, uh, this is an interesting thing, which is epigenetics. Epigenetics is the expression of genes, which is a function of your environment and your behavior and your lifestyle. And, uh, so a lot of the times what happens is these small, small things, I don't go too deep into it, but these make big impact on my thinking process. Right. So I said, okay, habit simplified epigenetics. Mm. So with an intent to see what can I do with myself, I started the journey, right? And uh, so I knew the science, so I got to the basics. I, I created a, a meal plan uh, for myself. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then the journey started. And uh, uh, so I did not go to the gym, no physical exercises. It was only nutrition mm-hmm. for the first nine months. Only food, right? No physical exercise. Yeah. Uh, I didn't put pressure on myself of any kind. Uh, but you know, I, I I went through that. So right, I'll pause. That that makes that those are great points, uh, Srinath. So one is I want to uh, double click on one point, right? One is about what is quantified nutrition. If you can talk a little bit about what that is. And also uh, speak a little bit about the struggle with uh, implementation. Implementation. You talked about, you know, while you knew all of it, the science was clear, you knew what to be done. And that is true for most everybody, right? You know what the right thing to do is. But the challenge is also always on uh, execution, right? Now, if you can talk a little bit of what is simplified, I mean, what is quantified nutrition, A, and B, what are the challenges you faced in implementing it, right? And I, I and and then maybe I got the connection in terms of how you kind of landed on this thing about habits and genetics, and we'll double click on that uh, as well. But if you can spend some time on what is quantified nutrition in the first place. <clears throat> See, quantified nutrition. Uh, I will possibly go back to a little more basics um, so that I can correlate it to quantified nutrition. Um, 
all of us need uh, energy to live, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so for us to breathe and for all the functions of our body to function the way it needs to function, whether it's a heart or lungs or kidney or whatever, you need a certain amount of energy, um, you know, to, to do that, right? And that comes in the form of, you know, glycogen, you know, which is basically glucose broken into glycogen and glycogen through the concept of ATP, which is your process of uh, breakdown uh, to deliver energy in kilocalories uh, is done inside the body through the various organs. So for us, based on our body composition and the body weight that we carry, we need a base energy every day, okay? Uh, so that's called as your basal metabolic rate. This is if you were just lying down in Shavasana, mm -hmm. okay, not doing anything, right? And then you are basically walking, you know, you're you are working, you're thinking, your brain uses a lot of energy and so on and so forth. So there's a little more extra energy that you need. And that total is called the total daily energy expenditure. It's called TDEE. Okay. Okay, so BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate, and TDEE -E is your total daily energy expenditure. So your body has the ability to deliver to itself the energy if you do not provide any external energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, it has the ability. It can it can break down from the reserves. Uh, it'll it'll reach out to your your muscles. Your it'll reach out to your fat. And, and so on and so forth, because there is a certain amount of energy that's already existing. That's how you see people who are fasting for seven days, 10 days, 30 days. They all exist. I mean, they don't die, right? I mean, so you have the ability to do that. But uh, there are hormones uh, in your stomach. There are, there are two primary hormones. I'm sorry, I'm not going to go very scientific, but just to give you a sense, because I'll connect the dots later. There's a, there's a hormone called ghrelin in your stomach, which is called as the hunger hormone. And there is a hormone called leptin, which is your satiation hormone. So these are the two hormones that function when it is asking you for food and when it mm. is saying you have eaten enough. So these are the hormones that are at work. So a lot of the times when ghrelin responds, it is because it is looking at the energy that is available inside the stomach. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is how it reaches out and says, hey, you're hungry. They sends out a brain signal to your brain and you say, oh, it's 1.30. So ghrelin is woken up. So, you know, let me go and eat. Maybe you are you don't need, but you eat. So I'll come to that later. So that's essentially a broad sense of the basal metabolic rate and the total daily energy expenditure. Now, in our food, and I'll only go to macros and micros. So, th so there are two kinds of nutrients. You have macronutrients and then you have micronutrients. Macronutrients are classified into three parts, protein, carbs, and fat. And micronutrients are, you know, your fiber and your sodium and your, you know, minerals, vitamins, and so on and so forth, right? So we'll not worry about micronutrients for now, but we'll just focus on the macros. So macros has three categories, protein, carbs, and fats. I'm sure everyone knows that. Uh, protein carries an energy of four calories. Carbs carry four calories. Uh, and Fat carries nine calories okay. per per some unit, right? What is it per, per gram? gram. Per gram. Per gram. Per gram. So typically, what happens is that when you consume um, when you uh, consume a protein uh, gram, you get four calories of protein gram, and then you get four calories of carb gram and nine calories of fat gram. So so when you are eating your food. It is very important that you have a combination of protein, carbs, and fat. That is what we call as balanced food, right? Mm. So your body needs these three macros for a healthy functioning, okay? And uh, why is a question as well, right? So protein is a... a need for your body for your cell reconstruction okay we we get confused about how poor protein is is for muscle building muscle building is one part of it but the fundamental function of protein is cell reconstruction so 
So there is your body is always going through a lot of cell reconstructions on a daily basis. Cells get damaged, you know, cells get reconstructed. So it has a self-defining mechanism of cell reconstruction. So protein helps in rebuilding cells. The carbs is is what is actually transitioning into core energy. So carb gives you quick energy, right? The, the process of the carbohydrate going into glucose, glucose going into glycogen. It's, it's a very simple process. So that's the one that gives you the burst of energy. Protein gives you the ability to reconstruct your cells. And fat is basically providing you lubrication, you know, because there are your organs and, you know, the muscles. So the lubrication is provided by fat and also fat provides you reserves. Mm-hmm. So, so typically what happens is that ratio is very important right that ratio of protein carb and uh, uh, fat is very important and we mess up as humans Mm -hmm. we mess up on the consumption of the ratio Mm. so depending on the heritage depending on your background depending on your 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 you know uh, what kind of food you like and what kind of food you eat and so on and so forth you end up messing that ratio and because of that you know the whole idea gets screwed up so in quantified nutrition you basically measure your food so whatever you eat you measure so when you measure you will get a sense of what is the macro that you are getting in that particular item and you basically identify that against your basal metabolic rate and your tde right so that is how you plan your food and that is quantified nutrition. Got it. Got it. No, that, that makes, uh, that's very helpful. And I think it's almost like a very a logical way of eating based on what you need. And 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 perhaps it's required because, uh, to your point, right, uh, most of us uh, have become emotional eaters, right? Uh, and that's true as human beings. You know, we are emo- emotional beings and our eating is also emotional. And I think what I'm hearing from what you're saying is that, okay, uh, that is fine where it is. You can't suddenly stop enjoying your chola bature, chole bature's. And, you know, at the moment you talk about chole bature or any, anything that's, that's your favorite food, you start salivating, you start imagining you want to eat it. And the next time you see it <laughs> in the restaurant, you're going to binge on it, right? And so here, from what I'm hearing is, is a method to, okay, step back and say, okay, one is the eating by instinct, eating by emotions. Um, and the other is to say, what do you really need? And here's a method to start with that process, right? At least get to know, be aware of this is what you need just to, uh, as, as a person to thrive. Um, that's what I'm hearing. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Um, because otherwise we we are mostly, you talk about gulab jamun and I'm sure we'll all jump at it and want to have a, uh, go at it, right? Uh, or anything, right? That makes sense. Now, coming to, that's a very logical left, you know, if, for lack of a better word, left brain way of functioning, which is not the case for most See, people. See, I want to take a minute. I just want to respond yeah. to one part right. that you talked about, which is emotional yeah. eating. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I did, I did some, I did some digging into emotional eating. Uh, mm. I mean, you know, all of us, I mean, you know, you know, I love, I love masala dosa. So mm. I love, yes. uh, you know, South Indian food. Uh, and I always wondered, I mean, why do we indulge? Mm. Right. And, and this happened, actually, this was a discovery I made about three months ago when the Diwali time happened. Right. See, we have, and, 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 and the best part of it is everything is hormones. Everything mm. is, is actually your brain playing games with you. Okay. Mm. So this is, this is you have to observe the game that the hormone is playing through a mm. different brainwave. And I'll tell you what, there is something called dopamine. Okay. So when you eat something, there is an impact on your dopamine. Okay. So I will give you an example. Think of it like puri. You know, mm. when you put a puri inside oil, you know, it fluffs up, right? Mm. And when it fluffs up, oh, it looks good. You know, it is fluffed up. And after you put it on a plate, it goes down. Mm, mm. But you like the feeling of fluffing up. Mm. So you want to fry that again. 
for it mm-hmm. to fluff up that moment of that high is mm-hmm. the dopamine effect so our brain is structured in a way that we want that dopamine effect so when you eat yeah. that gulab jamun when that sweet hits you there's a dopamine yeah. high you can't stop at one because you want yeah. that high again it felt good yeah and that does with every other thing whether it's alcohol or you know any other yeah. uh, elements that are there right i think you just need to be present to that uh mm. is is all that i'm saying i mean all of us experience it and it's and it's one hell of a challenge to uh, yeah. you know really work around it yeah no yeah absolutely correct you're right and i think uh, <clears throat> we uh, now know that dopamine that whole the whole process of getting that dopamine high is a part of all of our struggles food social media whatever right all the distractions that we have around us absolutely. gives us absolutely. that dopamine high and it's not necessarily good for you uh, but it gives you that uh, instant high in in whatever form right see what i've what i've realized is uh, and again a collection of lot of different elements if you are able to be present to the dopamine mm-hmm. high and if you are able to you know control that whole thing right i mean even insta mm-hmm. reels if you are able to define saying that mm-hmm. i'm going to spend this much time get out it's not easy i mean again mm-hmm. i go mm-hmm. back to connecting to the dots of the habit loop mm-hmm. it is mm-hmm. very important to simplify create a habit mm-hmm. so that all these things become part of your day to day living because you can't do without it also otherwise you go yeah. into deprivation and then you go into excess right yeah. and that's the thing that i was struggling with for 20 years yeah yeah makes sense so let i think maybe that's a good time to pivot into that whole uh, habit approach you've taken right and which is what is working and i think the question that everybody has is consistency and how did you do that and i think let's pivot into that so this whole idea about habits and how that's how did you implement it and what should people do so so first thing first thing that you need to you need to get out of mentally right or i needed to get out of mentally is this taboo and embarrassment that we are measuring our food okay this is actually one of the biggest missteps that i have seen lot of my um, lot of my friends go through because lot of friends came to me and asked me to put up diet plan and so on and so forth and the place where they struggle with is it's okay i don't have to measure mm. okay we measure our weight mm. and we are so happy when we drop 0.5 pounds yeah. we measure our biometrics we measure our blood levels but we don't measure our food it's a very strange behavior for a human being that mm. we find it a very uh, difficult all right um so so i think the first thing the first barrier that i had to get out of in my own head was that the the taboo of being judged for measuring my food mm-hmm. because it looked mm-hmm. very stupid you know yeah. when i go to when i go to people's houses or you know everything else right which i i figured out work arounds later on so i think i think that's the first thing that you need to get that thing off your head that measuring right. food is funny or it is mm-hmm. stupid and so on and so forth that is number 1 number 2 you have to come to terms that you can eat anything and everything that your heart wants mm-hmm. okay quantified nutrition is not starvation mm. okay it is only about eating meal in a balanced manner so that you mm. are getting the nutrients that your body needs right right and that's that's the fundamental of quantified nutrition so you are right. giving your body the nutrient that it needs okay mm-hmm. and it's a percentage of protein carbs and fat depending on what your health parameters are health metrics are and so on and so forth not everybody can consume it it's not a one size fits all so we have to work right. out individual plan and this and that right so that is that is uh, number 2 number 3 as i said you can eat anything pick your comfort foods this was mm. the third thing that i learned okay and which goes back to my point on simplicity right mm. so my favorite comfort food 
is dal and rice okay, okay? not moong dal not brown mm. rice it's just dal and rice mm. and mm. curd these are the three mm. comfort mm. foods for me mm. so as long as you have determined your comfort food okay you actually will need to create a plan to consume the nutrients that you need through the comfort food that you are able to consume so you are not making a drastic change to the way you live your life okay Okay. Um, so that was the third very important thing that I learned, okay, while I was initiating this particular process, right? The fourth thing which happened over a period of time is the food texture. See, we all have there are there are two things why we consume food, right? And again, it's a concept of hormones and brain and ghrelin and leptin and all that stuff, right? See, we consume food because we like the smell and we like the texture it's touching your senses okay so as long as you are able to create comfort foods with the right nutrients leveraging the the right macros creating the right texture and smell which is repeatable mm -hmm. simple yeah. repeatable satiating once you figure that out for yourself it is so easy it is mm. no longer a diet it is a lifestyle it is a and and then you start seeing the changes i mean you know both my wife and i got on this journey and the kind of uh, realizations that we get to is actually very joyous i mean it is it is very it is very joyous i mean you get into uh, and and we have done a lot of things after that i mean it will take maybe another hour to talk about some of those modifications but these are all very simple no right. complications no no complications that is number 4 number 5 connecting back to my theory on simplicity keep your foods simple okay very simple right keep your foods simple and what works for you uh you know i don't want to go on this journey of oh don't eat processed food and all that that's all established i mean everybody knows you are not mm -hmm. supposed to eat processed right. food. Uh, no questions right. about it right keep your food simple keep your foods uh, make make your own meal i cook my food a lot uh, my wife does it i cook it keep your cooking process simple enjoy your cooking process and 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 learn the science behind it it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun and and when you start seeing the results um you will actually start enjoying more and more and we'll talk mm -hmm. about results because that's a very important element that we need to touch upon because a lot of the weight fat loss experiments fail because mm -hmm. you are not seeing progress at the rate at which you want to see so we mm -hmm. want to talk about that as well but i want to pause and you know respond to any yeah. other things that you have yeah no those those are great those are great points and and, and i think what i'm you know kind of hearing is uh, you know connecting back to this uh, whole idea about power of habits and atomic habits right we refer to that book in the past and a lot of that has to do with working with where you are and building from there in terms of small changes but repeatable consistent small changes and i think if i were to connect back to what you're saying which makes a lot of sense is to use your comfort food as a baseline right instead Absolutely. of trying to now right instead of trying to dramatically change which is where everybody struggles and then they come back after 15 days and they go oh my gosh i'm missing my comfort food and boom back to binging absolutely instead right instead stay what you're saying your is food. stay with your comfort food and build around it like an adjacency and that helps you stay consistent and coming back to the emotional eating part right and um, the japanese call it the umami my understanding of umami is is that if there are three flavors which is sweet uh, you know uh, bitter saltiness sour sourness and then the japanese call umami which is that unique combination of texture and flavor that uh, foods have right so if you talked about let's say your dal chawal as an example there's something unique about it it's not the salt it's not the sour it's not the there's a unique emotional content in it which is what the japanese are referred to as umami and that is important because without that 
you're not going to be able to make the progress that you just described right that's that's my Absolutely. take away from what you're saying thanks for thanks for bringing reference to umami because that was one of the one of the other impactful points that came to me uh mm. you know when i was um see again i uh, a lot of the research that i've done is only for my own consumption right because i'm mm. just you know i'm operating from a point of curiosity yeah. because this has happened so many times before Yeah. and why are we doing the same thing again right mm. um so i think i think you're you've well articulated the summary of what i was trying to say uh yeah is pick your comfort food understand what you need right play around with texture and flavor and then it doesn't feel like you're actually doing anything substantially different from what you're already mm. doing right yeah and and what happens see there are there are two places where you will see the impact okay mm-hmm. you will not be able to consume the amount of protein that is actually prescribed for you per day you are mm. not consuming i can go out on a limb and tell you that you are not eating enough protein because mm. if you are eating enough protein you will not be able to eat carbs that is the biggest um you know discovery that we made along the way uh you know see i'll 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 give you an example if i may santosh i know uh, yeah. i'm not trying to digress but very uh, relevant example i'll give you possibly two examples and then you know we can decide when you are thirsty right you are extremely thirsty you go and drink water right after the first glass of water your thirst is quenched can you drink more water after that possibly not difficult. yeah it's very difficult mm-hmm. but when you are hungry mm-hmm. you go and eat rice and rasam and your comfort mm-hmm. food how many can you eat you have no definition for that yeah right yeah hunger thirst they're all the same so carbs your body has a mechanism to hold on to carbs because you know the human uh, evolution has been about you know conservation right that's how the fat thing happened and there's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of science that the one I'm going to yeah on the contrary when you're hungry go and eat 10 eggs mm-hmm. go and eat the same amount of calories equivalent mm-hmm. to carbs you will mm. not be able to consume that mm. because there is a different impact that protein has on your hunger as compared to carbs so that's point i'm trying to make is when you create your balanced food in your plate and you put the right quantity of protein mm. you will realize that you will not be able to consume the carbs that you were traditionally consuming yeah and that's Makes something that sense. you will need to think yeah right and that's a good hack right that's a good hack as well in terms of just from a day to day thinking perspective for people uh, even if you don't get the science and the you know uh, the the science behind it if there's one thing that somebody can take away from this conversation is that you know if you can increase your protein content just start looking at what is the amount of protein content and then start seeing Absolutely. how you can change that, that itself could be your first step towards this lifestyle that change, is right? that is absolutely the first step because especially for people who are aging right mm. who are going between 40s and 50s yeah you're actually losing your muscle mm-hmm. right so when you do fat diets you yeah you don't know whether you're losing muscle or fat right yeah so protein actually helps reconstruction of your cells so not having enough protein in your body is actually going to be impacting your muscle depletion see that is a yeah. reason why uh, older age adults uh, start developing arthritis and other kinds mm. of challenges because there there is a undue amount of knee pain and so on and so forth because mm. because your skeletal structure is now depleted of all the muscle mass and it's yeah. covered by fat and fat is nothing but you know blubber yeah so you're not getting enough protein because of that you're putting a lot of pressure on your skeletal muscle a uh, skeleton uh, skeletons um, yeah. you know so because of which the joints are losing out 
uh, on its ability to perform to the extent right so so yeah. i think we'll it, it, as i said i mean it's a long subject there is there's yeah. so much to talk um but but essentially that's the that's yeah. the broad summary yeah yeah makes sense okay so you know i just want to pivot into this one uh, element that you talked about results right and you mentioned and which is which is valid that if results are not moving you get tend to get discouraged so let's spend a few minutes on on, on that aspect uh because I, i think that's important as well <clears throat> see i think a, a a very very important point actually i mean i think one of the biggest challenges with fat loss regimens is our expectations of results hmm. okay so you know this was a random example i was one day i was giving someone uh, and i'll possibly explain to you uh, you know i can't explain to you uh, from a visual standpoint but so i was i was talking to someone and said uh, hey i was doing this i need to do this weight loss and stuff like that i said you know i said see i'm going to work with you if you give yourself one year time right i'm not going to be able to do it you know i said oh i'm getting ready for a wedding wedding is in 3 months i want to be ready for the wedding right and once upon a time i used to be a proponent of that but not after i understood the process so i said hey come let me show you something so i i took a toilet paper roll okay i i put it on the on the counter and i covered it with a piece of cloth okay and i said see this toilet paper roll is your body that you know your internals okay which is basically giving you the shape and your cover on top of it your cloth on top of it is your outer skin right so i took out that thing i compressed the toilet paper roll okay and i put the 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 cloth back on it again i said see you have a weight loss in 3 months okay that's what happens when you do sudden drastic changes you are basically compressing the body forcefully right but if you are going to take a consistent approach and i took another toilet paper roll and i started cutting out one paper at a time and i cut it out over a period of time and it said okay this is how you go down this is healthy because you are taking out layers after layers and it's a function of time it's not a it's a function of time and consistency and it's not a function of you know some random stuff so so these are broad examples so that is number one right in a toilet paper roll when you take out the first paper out you don't see any change in your body in your physical appearance when you take out the second you don't see any change when you take out the third you don't see any change but what you will have to be mm. mentally ready is that change is happening so like i'll give an example i had my uh, i have a car driver that picks me up i travel pretty much every every week you're aware of it and he used to meet me every week for the first 7 months and i'm dropping i drop my you know weight fat all that stuff <laughs> one day he came he picked me up and he said shri what have you done to yourself i said nara you met me on friday and today is monday what could i have done in the three days that's when he first noticed okay that period in time when people are not noticing is when you lose your motivation that is when this whole thing sounds stupid oh i am measuring my rice so stupid i am measuring my this thing it's so stupid and so on and so forth right trust me the change is happening you don't know about it okay a recent example happened to my wife she was plateaued at a certain weight for almost about 7 weeks and she was so stressed out so stressed out she said i'm doing everything i am not seeing the change the weight is not moving the scale is saying the same and after the 7th week overnight her weight dropped by 7 pounds overnight mm. okay so your scale is a function of several different 
things that are happening inside your body. It's a function mm-hmm. of your hormones. It is a function of your weight, um, water um, retention. Uh, so there are so many different elements that are playing out. Right. So for for you to continue, you have to stick to a plan. There is no right. shortcut. There is no rocket science. You have to stick to a plan. Yep. There's that's it. I mean, there's it's uh, as I said, habit simplified is all that matters and understanding yeah. and it is very important to understand yeah makes sense i i hear you and um, i think uh, this this probably this is a topic that maybe will require a little bit more of uh, you know deep dive uh, especially because we live in a results oriented uh, society right um, and and it's just it's just the, it's just the way the way, you know the nature of the beast uh, but I think what may be important is to spend some time around how do you, maybe it's not that weekly results that you should be measuring. Maybe it's the monthly result. Maybe it's 15 days. But there is some form of, uh, some. what do you look for as a result so that you can still say that you're making, going in the right direction. And maybe it's, so that's something maybe see, we should think, talk uh, about. Uh, I think uh, just to kind of uh, see when I when I say this, uh, see what happens is we go by conventional wisdom. Mm. We basically have read in various journals and things and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, that you lose on an average two pounds a week, or you lose mm. on an average one pound a week. So there are mm. some right. parameters that we have set in our heads about what is acceptable as a weight loss, right? Yeah. So that is that is number one. Number two, we believe that weight dropping or, you know, weight, I'm using weight um, because fat is a loss and weight is a drop. Mm. Uh, Mm. Weight dropping is a consistently downward cycle. Mm. That is not true. Mm. Okay. So it's like, it's like a stock market, right? I mean, if you look at a stock market on a day-to-day basis, there could be a lot of fluctuations, right? If you look at any of right. the high-performing stock, you know, whether it's an Amazon or a Google, you don't look right. at a, you know, weekly yeah. performance, yeah. right? Yeah. You yeah. look at it on an annual mm. basis and say, okay, mm. oh, there is all this, but then it is rising. Mm. That is what happens with the weight loss, yeah. right? It is Makes going, sense. you know, kind of like a sinusoidal wave, but on a downward spiral. Yeah, that yeah. you will see absolutely. You know, if you see okay. it over a period of time. So, so let me summarize. So, if you really want to look at the difference that is happening to your body, measure your weight on a daily basis, but average it out on a weekly basis. Okay. Mm. So that will give you a better sense of the progress that you're making, and you know how it is impacting you and The progress that you're making is not a function of, you know, equation, an algebraic equation, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It is not according to that because you will slip here and there. You will eat something here and there. You are going to miss some things. And and there are a lot of different elements to this. As you said, I mean, this needs a lot more conversation because it's a function of your sleep. It's a function of your stress. It's a function of your activities and so on and so forth. So... Yeah, yeah, so that's that's where we are. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Hey, uh, I know we spent uh, we spent almost an hour. Uh, we thought we'll do a thirty minute conversation, and we are here almost hitting an hour. And I think the topic is such that you can keep going on. But I think there are uh, some golden nuggets uh, that I believe we've uh, discovered in this conversation, Srinath, and very practical, uh, you know, mindset changes that people can adopt uh, after hearing this conversation and i agree with you we can do a deep dive on certain specifics uh, in on some so i can have you back in the uh, in the studio again my my beautiful studio uh, <laughs> so um, i want to kind of uh, maybe do a wrap up here uh, i believe we've covered a whole bunch of topics from uh, you know the psychological aspect of weight loss we've talked about habits we've talked about the nutritional science behind uh, and it's not weight loss, it's fat loss. And, uh, you know, you've achieved close to 50 pounds, I believe. Um, a lot more, but yeah. A lot more, you know, that's like uh, 20, 30% of you is gone. Uh, so that's all amazing, right? So I want to kind of uh, maybe bring this conversation to a, 
close here. But before that, I want to do a fun Q&A round. Okay. All right. Which since you're talking about food, and I like this question that I, uh, favorite question to all my guests. What's your favorite junk food? I, I love masal dosa. I don't Masal know whether dosa? we want to call it uh, junk food, junk but food. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't. I know. I, I. I mean, it's not. Uh, uh, you know, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, I've actually forgotten. Um, <laughs> I've actually forgotten what junk food I used to like. I'm not a. I'm not a big fan of junk food. Actually, I mean, if you're if you're okay. thinking, okay, fries or uh, nuggets or whatever. Uh, no, I mean, never been yeah. a big fan of that. You are in state of nirvana. Okay. No, no, no. My, 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 my state of weight acquisition is all because of all because of the other kinds of food, right? The masala dosas yeah. and the idlis yeah. and, and so on. Yeah, yeah. masala dosa. Okay. What's your favorite way to spend a lazy day other than fussing over nutrition and weight loss? Uh, you know, I definitely do a lot of singing. Uh, mm. You know, uh, and uh, uh, I have this created this penchant habit because now I don't get I don't I don't get to laze too much because there's too much of too much of uh, adrenaline in my head uh, so so I'm either singing or I'm doing uh, you know some chores around the house or I'm cleaning or or things like that that's how I, I normally spend I've, I've cut back a lot on my tv time um, so not being not being very active on watching anything so all right okay so Last one, I know in the interest of time, you have somewhere to go. If we made a movie of your life so far, what genre would you put it in? And who would you hire to play your character? Hmm. See, I think it will be a... See, my... my uh, uh, it, it will be a family drama or family social, right? Uh, with with a little bit of uh, with a little bit of uh, uh, I would say <laughs> I would say some sports angle to it, okay. And just for my wife's sake, I will say we'll add a little dash of romance also to it because she doesn't think I am that. So so I think it will it will predominantly be a family social. And who would you hire to play for it? Play your role. Um. See, Akshay Kumar is too old now, so I have to <laughs> I have to get someone younger, right? So out of the out of the young lot, uh, I think Karthik Aryan would be a good choice. Okay, Karthik, the script coming your way. <laughs> awesome. Hey, that was good. I didn't think you would take that long to answer that question, but uh, you never know, right? Uh, uh, but thanks. You, we, uh, I had to reduce the number of questions to only three. Usually, I asked five, but you, I know you need to go. But thanks, Srinath, um, you know, uh, for the time you spent with us. Uh, before I go, I want to give you the last word. Any final message for the listeners? No, I think uh, uh, my my only, only message is that there is a lot of stuff that is available on social media. I am also a big consumer of a lot of things on social media. Uh, just be cognizant about, you know, uh, who you follow, number one. Uh, also... Do your own research. Uh, don't believe everything that you hear. Uh, I'm actually from from a from a transformation of uh, you know fat loss or weight loss, whatever you want to call it, uh, healthy living. I'm now transitioning into into structure and and you know muscle building uh, journey. Uh, I'm again discovering. I mean, it's a three month old exercise, uh, so I'm discovering. So there's a lot of stuff that's out there with regards to this. So I'm learning uh, and I'm doing my own research. So spend time. It's your life. It is your body. Uh, I think it is worth it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I can tell you that once you get into the groove, I mean, you suddenly feel one amongst, you know, the people uh, mm -hmm. who are, you know, talking about fitness. It's very yeah. simple. It's not complicated at all. Uh, you know, just, just give yourself a little bit of room. Great. That's a great message, Srinath. I'm going to let you go and have you spend the rest of the afternoon and uh, thank you so much thank you stay in touch all right